Hey everyone, I hope you had a very safe and productive um, uh, and happy, uh, I was going to say New Year, spring break. Um, I have graded all of your first exams and I have sent emails to each one of you. If for some reason you did not receive an email from me about your first exam grade, please email me at Jackie at BalletProjects.com and we'll see what's going on. Um, last year when I tried to send things through um, Blackboard, even though that's how we do most of our announcements, a lot of my students couldn't access it and there was a lot of hiccups, so I felt emailing each person individually was best. Um, very good first effort. I thought um, many of you did really good research and you went above and beyond what the minimum requirements were. So I was I was happy. That makes me happy when I see those grades. Okay, so we're gonna talk about chapter six and that's about interest groups. Um, different type of interest groups. So we have an economic group, which is seeks financial advantage. We have a non-economic group, which just tries to do things that will help our economy and our society uh, be better. And then we have mixed groups, which has a mixture of the two. In your textbook on table 6.1, it shows classifications and selected types. As I mentioned, economic, which means for the betterment of the members financially. And examples that they give you are Texas Farm Bureau, Texas Association of Business, Texas Oil and Gas, and Texas AFL-CIO. Those are just a couple of examples of uh, economic interest groups. And, oh, let me back up because I, I don't know unless you did happen to read exactly what the definition of an interest group is. An interest group is a collection of people, businesses that are uh, highly uh, actively engaged in public policy. Forms of persuasion, um, even peaceful protests, uh, lobbying, which we'll talk a little bit about later. Those are all examples of how interest groups can pursue politicians and persuade public policy. Okay. Also, uh, in on table 6.1, it shows you non-economic, which are uh, Texas Right to Life, or poor choice, uh, environmental groups, uh, Center for Public Policy, which is a public policy group. And then of course you have those that are mixed like the Texas Teachers Association. Okay, as I mentioned before, different ways that interest groups use to influence public policy can go from lobbying, socializing, persuasion, and just targeting certain legislators. Lobbying, that is directly contacting officials to advocate for a certain public policy. That's called lobbying. Furthermore, on figure 6.1, it shows different interest groups and their tactics or tools that they use to influence. And it depends on the political system, it depends on the group, uh, ultimately, the, uh, the, uh, the power or the ability to persuade is what you're looking for. Um, why are some interest groups more successful than others? Well, some have better persuasion tactics, are better at lobbying, um, are more influential because they have larger numbers and have higher financial resources. So, in figure 6.1, it shows you the different areas that interest groups will target. They'll target, for instance, the legislature, the governor, even justices or judges, and the overall political environment. Some ways that, that are used are lobbying, as I mentioned before, campaign contributions, if you contribute to uh, within the ethics rule of ethics, if you contribute to uh, an elected official, some believe that is one of the quick, quickest ways that you can actually get some influence with their key staff or with them.
Okay, so um, influencing the executive branch. We don't have like an executive cabinet, not a formal one here in Texas. So how do we influence the branch? Well, usually when we say branch, we mean the top tier of the elected officials and or their staff. And ways that they are affected, um, interest groups can form close alliances with the governor, lieutenant governor, their team that are around them, the agencies that they want to target. These close alliances will develop um, between a state agency and a certain clientele, the more that they are um, aware of you, the more comfortable they are with your position and your stance. Shaping the political environment, interest groups and lobbyists. Now, the definition of a lobbyist. Interest groups will often hire a person to help them um, with their efforts of persuasion or their efforts of working with certain state agencies and influencing policy. That person is a lobbyist. A lobbyist has to adhere to a lot of laws and a lot of rules, have to um, conform to the Texas Ethics Commission's, the policies under the Texas Ethics Commission. In other words, there's a lot of reporting procedures that has to be done if you're a lobbyist. Uh, you have to be very strategic, but you also have to follow a lot of rules if you are a lobbyist. Um, examples of what some of the lobbyists will do, they usually take their elected officials and or policymakers out for dinner, for lunch, for breakfast, um, will have meetings in their offices to talk about key policy issues and how their interest group that they are advocating for or their policies they're advocating for would be the better decision and the better route to take. Those are all different examples on how interest groups and lobbyists will work to try to influence an elected official or key policymakers. Public employees such as teachers become an economic interest group that was both under the mix, right? They're trying to do better by influencing our youth and teaching, but also because teachers are, are part of a large member of their association, they're trying to make sure that the lives are enhanced. The group, um, the, the teachers association makes sure, will look out for the enhancement of teachers and administrators. Public demonstrations, and we've been seeing them more and more, are also efforts that are used by interest groups to influence public policy. Um, in Houston in particular, we saw a lot, or not just Houston, throughout the country, we saw protests um, last summer for, under the um, George Floyd. And as a result, we've seen a lot of legislation that is now being passed in or suggested and being brought up for votes um, in, in police and urban reform. And so, Public demonstrations are another form of influencing policy. And George Floyd and police reform is a direct example that we've seen this summer. In Texas, our most powerful interest groups are, of course, energy, since we are the energy capital, natural resources, health finance, and communication. Those are all of our powerful interest groups. When we say powerful, it means they have a many members, and it also means that they have a lot of resources, a lot of money, and a lot of influence, and have been very effective. Umbrella organizations are associations formed by smaller interest groups, and they all join together to promote some kind of common policy goals by making campaign contributions and or hiring lobbyists to represent their interests. In figure 6.2, it shows lobbying spending in Texas. The largest that we have is under, of course, the energy, natural resources, and waste. So that could, that could be why they are one of the most powerful interest groups we have in our state is because they spend a lot of money, $47 million to be exact. 
And then next you have health professionals, 34 million, and then single issues. That means it is just an interest group that re represents various single issues, and they're third. But those are a lot of dollars, 47 million, 34 million, and 33 million. Iron Triangles in Texas. That is a long-standing alliance among interest groups, legislators, and bureaucrats. And they all have um, a, a mutual self-interest uh, with each other. Uh, even though they are individual or individual entities, they all work together in the public policy system and in the decision-making process. Issues networks, that's alliances with a wide range of individuals and a wide group of people, okay? So again, Iron Triangle is very specific. It's with interest groups, legislators, and bureaucrats. Issues networks is with a broad range of individuals, that could be me and you, who have been active in public policy. A lot of people say that um, our public policy, um, the way public policy is actually implemented is through an elitist theory, which means that the state is ruled by a small number of participants and those small number will exercise power. And unfortunately, sometimes that's to further their own self-interest. We also have a revolving door, which is the interchange of employees between government agencies and private businesses in which they have dealings. And then we also have a conflict of interest. A conflict of interest is where public officers stand to benefit personally based on decisions that they make. For instance, You've heard and you've seen uh, quite a few of our elected officials who will pass a law because a certain uh, lobbyist or interest group gave them money. In most of those instances, it's illegal. Some of them, they do it right within the frame of the, and the letter of the law, but others will still say it's a conflict of interest because the legislator or the public official will benefit from that law being passed. As I mentioned, a lot lobbyists is uh, lobbying. The art of lobbying is regulated. Um, you have to register a report to the state. You have to say who your clients are, where areas of policy are, your compensation, how much they're paying you, expenditures, how much you spend. So it's quite lengthy, a report, the reports that lobbyists have to submit. The regulation of lobbying has come out under scrutiny for years, for decades, and it will continue to. Um, a lot of critics say that um, the categories are too broad and there's not enough information. Uh, the Texas Ethics Commission is who lobbyists have to report, send their reports to, and sometimes they're criticized for not enforcing the requirements um, fairly or equally or enough. Governor Abbott has um, used an ethics reform and he's been very strong about that. That's been one of his priorities since he's been in office. Um, and he has continued to push for ethics reform. So that is the chapter of on public interest and interest groups, public policy and interest groups. Um, we are whizzing by. Again, if you did not receive your grade from me, please email me at Jackie at .com and I'll figure out why you did not receive an email from me. Check your uh, junk mail first, please, because sometimes my email goes into junk mail. And I hope you guys are having a good week. It's beautiful. Get out there. Okay. Talk to you guys later. Bye.